I'm going to show you how to make your electron cloud model for your element. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I need to make the basics of my electron cloud. So I'm going to pick a circle. This is the edge of the cloud, and I'm going to do a second circle. Goes in the middle. This is my nucleus. All right, in the nucleus, I'm going to have two things. The nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons. So I'm going to pick a text color for my protons, okay? And then pick a different color for my neutrons. All right, these are going to go into the center of my atom in the nucleus. So I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. All right. Okay. So I need to figure out the number of protons and neutrons. The number of protons is fairly straightforward. Okay, the number of protons is equal to the atomic number. Okay, so what is the atomic number? My atomic number is 80. Okay, it is the number that is a whole number and it is also always, um, of all the numbers around here, it's the smallest number. All right, so the number of protons I have here is 80. That one was pretty easy. Now I need to figure out the number of neutrons. All right, the number of neutrons takes a little bit of calculation, so I'm going to show you what that is. All right, the atomic mass is equal to protons plus neutrons. This number here, 200.59, that is the atomic mass, 200.59. Okay. So the atomic mass is an average, and so we won't actually end up with like a decimal number. So what we do with the atomic mass is we actually round it. And so when I round it, it becomes 201, okay? And then we already figured out the number of protons because we found that out from looking at this number here. And so my number of protons is 80. And now I just need to figure out what the number of neutrons. So what I'm going to think about is 201 equals 80 plus what number? So when I th go through and do the math for that, I can figure out that 201 equals 80 plus 121. Okay? So the number of neutrons I have is 121. All right, so I can go ahead and now put that in here. Okay, now I need to deal with my electrons. So, to do the electrons, there's a few different things to think about. One, there's this thing called the electron configuration. Okay, and that is located right here. This is the electron configuration. All right, when I look at that electron configuration, that is the total of all the electrons that I have. And if I add all of those up, it will equal 80. Okay, now the number that I particularly want to look at is this number two. For me it's a number two. For you it might be a number two, it might be a different number. But it is the bottom number. The bottom number here is your number of valence electrons. Okay, so I'll catch that. The bottom number is the number of valence electrons. So I have a two and I can put my two valence electrons, and they go right here on the edge. So I pick a different color, they're green. And I'm gonna make two of them. All right, you can put the valence electrons anywhere along this edge, okay? But um, they need to be on the edge. Now, I will tell you, you will not have more than eight valence electrons. That's the most that you can possibly have, okay? So let me show you the second way to figure out the number of valence electrons you have. All right, I'm going to switch to a periodic table here. Okay, the number of valence electrons is also based on what family the element is in. So family one or group one, all of these elements here have one valence electron. Group two, they all have two valence electrons. Group 13 has three. Notice I didn't say 13, it has three valence electrons. Group 14 has four valence electrons. 15 has five valence electrons. S group 16 has six valence electrons. 
Group 17 has seven valence electrons, and group 18 has eight valence electrons, except for helium. Helium is a small atom, and it only has two. Okay, there's two valence electrons. All right, so now going back to this here. So that kind of tells you how to find the number of valence electrons. Okay, and I'll put a little note here just so you can see that. It says valence electrons. Uh, equals the bottom number of the electron configuration. Okay, also valence electrons are based on the group number. Okay. Okay, so that's how you find the valence electrons. All right, now we have one last thing to do, and that's the non-valence electrons, the others, okay? So I had two valence here, but then I have all the rest of these. If I add all of these up, these are going to tell me how many other electrons I have. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so everybody can see it change the color. Now since we're still talking electrons, I'm going to keep it the same color as the valence electrons, okay? All right, see these are my other electrons. Oh, that is a little bit difficult to see. All right, I can change it later. Okay, so how do I figure out the other electrons? So like I said, you can add all this up and that gives the amount. Okay, that's one way. There is a second way to do it. And the only reason why I sent, uh, mentioned this is because just in case you want to know the other way. So the last thing to know is protons equals electrons. Okay? So once again, I know that I have 80 protons. And then I can break the electrons into two parts. I can say my valence electrons plus the others, the other electron. Okay? So that's kind of the equation that we're going to be looking at. So I'm going to say 80 equals, I know that I have two valence electrons, and then I'm going to say plus how many others. So 2 plus what gives me 80, and from doing that, I know that the answer is going to be 78. Okay? The only reason why I bring this up is 80 minus 2, oops, sorry. 80 minus 2 is a lot easier to do than to add up all of these. Sometimes when you add these up, you get the wrong number, okay? Just because there are a lot of numbers to add up. All right, so I'm going to put 78. So now that I've done that, I have a completed uh, electron cloud model for Mercury. So hopefully this will help you do yours.